Okay, hello everybody. Let us uh, begin uh, our conference. Thank you for traveling in December to Poland. Uh, it's probably better to be in the Caribbean <laughs> this time of year. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, they logo, as you can see, at the uh, back of the program, so I will not uh, mention them. But uh, all of this would not be possible with a whole host of volunteers, and uh, I'm going to name them um, one by one. Um, so, special thanks to Natalia Eugenska, uh, Monika Genkowska, Nina Seiler, Zuzanna Marenkas, Marta Taperek, Agnieszka Pluwaczewska, Barbara Smoleń, Anna Rosner, Barbara Kersowicz, and a whole host of students from American Studies Center who will be visible uh, and helping us. Uh, throughout uh, this event. Uh, we are starting uh, here today uh, with a keynote and we'll still have a, a greetings and welcome from the heads of the departments, uh, but I would like to already announce that uh, please note that uh, we will have our talks and lectures tomorrow on Thursday and on Friday, not here, but at the Staszic Palace at a different location. Uh, so please do not come here unless after hours to see more of the exhibition. Um, now please a few words uh, from the head of uh, uh, Slavic Studies of the Polish Academy of Sciences um, and then the head of uh, American Studies Center, uh, our uh, most important sponsors. Thank you. Excellences, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on behalf on, of the Institute of S Slavic Studies of the Polish Academy of Sciences to the International Conference Shibolesh 1967-68 here in Warsaw. For several, year, for several years, researchers from the Institute of Slavic Studies have investigated the mentality and identity of the Slavic nations. In these studies, relationship to Jewish history and culture, it proved to be of the great consequence. This topic is imperative, moving, and even crucial for the formation of the identity of the peoples of Central and Eastern Europe. That is why this conference should be considered as a very significant event. I wish you a fruitful scientific atmosphere and inspiring discussions. Thank you. I don't have any such beautiful remarks prepared. Sorry, that's okay. I can use the, 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 the mic. Uh, I, I'm just extremely happy that we were able, I say we, but I, I really mean Carolina, and I think we should extend to her our warmest thanks and uh, uh, for her initiative, energy, and, and, and other people who helped her. Yes, I just know her only, this is the only person whom I know personally so well, but I know uh, for uh, Carolina and her collaborators whom I just met, and thank you very much for putting this two, two together. And Bohdan Sklavsky from the American Studies Center, uh, she called me a sponsor. Uh, well. Uh, uh, intellectual sponsor, very much so, because that's the, the idea of the 67, 68, and we're looking at the program of the, of the conference, I see that it reflects exactly the type of philosophy of science that we like to practice at the American Studies Center, that is conceptual, focusing, uh, well, uh, this, the, the years are the pretext for this discovering so many things that can be intertwined to, together. It's amazing how, starting with a date, how much you can discover about life, about its in intricacies. Um, I, I, I'm also, it's, it's a special pleasure for me to be here because I have a somewhat personal uh, connection to, to this. Uh, 
some of my family was forced to leave Poland after 1968, so I have close cousins in Israel and in Sweden. And since my, my, my father is a recipient of the Righteous Among Nations Award, then that's a, well, he's long dead now, but I'm, I'm to, I think he would, he would be ecstatic seeing me here, opening such an event that he himself may have had a little con con contribution to by giving me life so that I could open the event, <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, I did, this was a brilliant idea and you pu putting together to work uh, four institutions each dealing with different problems but then finding something in, in common. Yes, isn't that what academic life is about? Yes, people leaving their narrow constraints of their institutions and looking for research topics that can integrate, really bring us together and help us talk uh, and looking at the conference and at the, at the list of speakers who will be here, uh, not here, remember, Pawad Stasica tomorrow, when I say here I mean the e event, yes. Um, in the next few days uh, I think that's exactly what we should be heading for, broad interdisciplinary, multi-dimensional and I hope intellectually very, very stimulating um, discussions and, and, and lectures and meetings and dinners and lunch breaks and, and everything that can bring us together. So, uh, uh, okay, on, uh, on behalf of myself, uh, am I right to open the, the event? Is it okay or is someone else going to speak? Okay, so uh, on behalf of the sponsors of this event, I'm hereby declaring the conference open. Okay, we're getting closer and closer to the opening lecture. <laughs> um, uh, I'm here now to introduce Amy Kaplan, um, and uh, before I read out loud this, this thing, um, I would like to say uh, that thinking about this conference, this was the first thought of a person uh, who can deliver a provocative uh, opening uh, talk. And I'm so happy that Amy Kaplan agreed to come on such a short notice. And this, in fact, uh, is the case with all of you. Uh, thank you all so much for responding to the call on such a short notice. This is the funding that needs to be spent to the end of the year. <laughs> um, so I thought about Amy um, uh, uh, because this is the field of American studies. And thinking about the transnational aspect of how we want to approach here, 1967, uh, 68, this was my field, that this is how I could contribute uh, to the shaping of this conference. Uh, so uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Professor Kaplan now. Amy Kaplan is Edward W. Kane Professor of English at the University of Pennsylvania. She's a key scholar of New American Studies who, through her work, helped to change and expand the paradigm of the discipline to critically highlight the global cultural hegemony of the U.S. This line of inquiry has produced such books as her monograph, The Anarchy of Empire in the Making of the U.S. Culture, and the co-edited volume with Donald P's Culture of U.S. Imperialism. Her introduction to the latter volume, entitled Left Alone with America, The Absence of Empire in the Study of U.S. Culture, is a must-read in any graduate course devoted to the approaches within American studies today. And uh, I see some of my students, or former students here, and they did read it with me. <laughs> she envisions in this text empire as a way of life both for Americans and foreign subjects of U.S. domination. Empire is a way of life, empire is ordinary, as we could say following Raymond Williams, also means that imperial projects are not specific to foreign policy, diplomacy, and economy, but are embedded in cultural text, and I hope this is part of what we're going to see today. A lot of Amy Copeland's research and teaching is devoted to the 19th century, you can view her lecture on Melville uh, on YouTube if you want to see uh, the width and the, uh, how broad her interests are. 
but she has also addressed various issues of contemporary imperial culture, for instance, about, she wrote, for instance, about Guantanamo. It is this critically transnational perspective that informs her ongoing research project on cultural history of American representations of Israel, which her talk today, entitled June 1967 and the Vietnam War, is a part of. In 2010, in Dublin, as a participant in the American Studies Summer School, I had the pleasure of hearing an early version of a part of this new work. This talk from Dublin was expanded into the first chapter of the book on the 1950s, already published in 2013 in the journal New Literary History. It centers on Leon Uris's best-selling novel Exodus and discusses Zionism as anti-colonialism. Today's talk advances this research and promises to force us to consider the events of the Six-Day War and the date 1967-68, the title of this conference, in a broader perspective shaped by multiple American imperial projects permeating the realm of culture. Please join me in welcoming Amy Kaplan. <laughs> 